<laughs> so today we're gonna piss off some melanated individuals with no actual comprehension of history, archaeology, or demographics via geographical location during Black History Month of all months. Why not? Twitter's a shitstorm, as always, and if it's not YouTube drama related, it's usually a bunch of people being outraged at some inconceivable injustice to whatever minority community. So what are we talking about today? No, we are not talking about the contemporary slavery to be found still in the Horn of Africa happening today. This, right now, we're not talking about that. We are going to be talking about something, or well, someone, of much more importance than the multitudes of enslaved people within the contemporary world. Her name is Nefertiti, and she reigned over Egypt some 3,000 years ago-ish, give or take a few hundred. So obviously, this is the most pressing issue of our time that we should definitely be wasting time discussing on Twitter. The bastion of all socio-political discussions. Anyone who says differently is obviously a bigot. So what's the issue, you may be asking yourself. Well, I will tell you. And by the way, I was hella excited to do this video. I love Egyptian archaeology and history, and it just you, you do not understand. It was my passion in elementary school. I wanted to be an archaeologist for the longest time, until I realized that the Mummy Movie trilogy was not historically accurate, and that Brandon Fraser began to look like this. Yeah. Anyway. My shenanigans aside, let's get into the article, and then I have a few tweets, some golden nuggets from the internet. Whitewashed bust of Queen Nefertiti has people scratching their head. And I'll show you guys a picture of what exactly has the Twitter sphere in such a hissy fit this fine February morn. A reconstructed bust of ancient Egyptian Queen Nefertiti made its debut on NBC's Today Show this week. However, the final product left many dumbfounded as to why Her Highness's likeness was severely lacking in melanin. Led by Expedition Unknown's Josh Gates, a team of historians and other key professionals worked to reconstruct the famous stucco-coated bust, doing their best to ensure accuracy in revealing what Queen Nefertiti may have actually looked like. The new bust was replete with the iconic hat, her royal regala, and a slightly rosy pout. So now that you've seen the bust in question that has Twitter up in arms, allow me to show you the most famous likeness of the queen herself, discovered in 1912. It should be noted that the original bust, that this new bust making a wave on social media is a replica of, well, they did a chemical analysis of the original bust itself, the details of which can be found in a book entitled Head of Queen Noferetite and this Rudolph on page six, according to the Wikisphere. And it found that the skin color of the bust was actually a light red. In fact, they know exactly what components were used in coloring the head of the bust. Fine powdered lime spar colored with red chalk or iron oxide. In case you were wondering, like I was, how you could look like this wonderful specimen of melanated Egyptian pharaoh. A little concealer, lime and iron oxide, then contour them cheekbones and you are good to go. I should, I should start a beauty blogging channel. You guys have watched that, right? The most jarring feature, however, was how light the artist made her skin. That was the most jarring, honestly. You know what, we'll get into that. I have my own criticisms, but um, so let me just do a quick digital color analysis of exactly what skin tone each bust is. And you know what, for, for transparency's sake, and because I know that there are going to be people out there who make this criticism probably, I'll do Nefertiti, the original bust of Nefertiti, in the light and in shadow, because you know, that shit matters to people, I guess. So here on the screen, you can see the color results of the recreated bust. And it's a slightly roge tinge, you know, a tad peaky, a little bit warm colored. And then there's the original bust itself in a little more dimly lit room, as you can see the color scheme taken from the same area, the forehead in fact, is a bit darker by a few shades, as to be expected, it's in the shade. Then there is the same exact bust in different lighting, same placement of the marker, but from a different angle. And you will notice that the bust, when it has been illuminated fully, is actually several shades lighter than its shadowy counterpart. In fact, it's actually a few shades lighter than its recreation counterpart. Now, what does this tell us, ladies and gentlemen? Well, one, that lighting makes all the difference with regards to perception. So for those wannabe Instagram models out there, keep that in mind. 
But what it really tells us is that the recreation is somewhere in between those two shades with a little bit of pink added to the mix. You can do this very same analysis for yourself if you don't believe me. I use the Chrome extension Color Pick Eyedropper, but by all means, have fun doing your color analyses. As an ancient Egyptian queen and mother to the legendary Tut, that's disputed! They don't know that! Nefertiti would have likely resembled the darker-skinned inhabitants of the African Empire. In the reconstruction, however, she's only slightly tanned with rosy cheeks. I mean, since it is a reconstruction of the original bust, despite whatever conspiracy theories may be surrounding the original bust, I just did a color analysis comparing the two. The original from two different lighting perspectives, and I'd say that we can't really fault the rendition, seeing as it's somewhat of an in-between of the two skin tones. I mean, honestly, there are real things that can be criticized about this bust that have nothing to do with skin tone. For one, the recreation's cheekbones are entirely too low when compared to the original. Two, the jawline is a little bit more square, giving the appearance of a woman with a little bit more of a serious expression, whereas in the original bust, if you look at it, it appears to be of a more slightly amused but significantly reserved expression. Furthermore, while in the original bust the eyes were a dark charcoal, in the rendition they were more of a hazel color. Yes, there are things to criticize about this bust, but focusing on skin color and skin color alone seems a tad bit... What's, what am I... What, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, racist. It didn't take long for black Twitter to cry foul over the European-like statue, many offering examples of what the new bust should have looked like. And so now we turn our faces to the Twitter dumpster fire that has been going on. No, this time I did not get into any arguments with anyone. Yet. At today's show, hashtag Nefertiti, your alternative lies don't work on people who know their history. Nefertiti was black. Now, I don't mean to be a killjoy, but even if I were to discount the validity of the original bust, you know, that it was a bullshit creation by German scientists somewhere, which has been made, I will remind you right now, the original bust, what this newer model is based on. The simple fact of the matter and the problem with imposing your own personal social political agenda onto that of a woman who lived 3,000 years ago, specifically this woman in question, as well as her family, is that as of right now, current year, not only was it 3,000 years ago, so skin and tissue DNA analysis are made all the more difficult, but archaeologists have either not found or have not yet identified her remains. So you claim to know a great deal about your history, black history. However, I regret to inform you that Africa as a continent is far from a monolith of skin tone. I'm sorry to say. Your average North African skin tones are a great deal lighter than your average South African skin tones. A common misconception in the public sphere is that African people are meant to have a unilaterally ebony skin pigment, which is simply not the case. North Africans are closer in culture as well as in appearance to their neighbors to the north across the Mediterranean, namely the Greeks, Romans, Arabs, the Ottomans, than they are with their neighbors to the south across the Sahara in South Africa. Why is this? Well, because it's easier and far more desirable to cross a sea rather than a desert. Throughout the Mediterranean Peninsula, the various civilizations to be found around that area engaged in trade across the nations with various others in that area. It was an epicenter of trade, a grand exchange, if you will. Greatly varied in terms of skin tones and appearance, of course, but your average North African, especially in ancient times, when the two civilizations were separated by an uncrossable barrier, the, Sah the Sahara Desert, would not be this dark. They were not black. There can be evidence of this seen in various ancient Egyptian artifacts, namely in the picture of Tutankhamun and his wife Anken Senamun, if I said that right. <laughs> Neither of them look black here to me, more so red, in fact. Hmm. Since we know that Nefertiti was Anken Senamun's mother, and, you know, the jury is still kind of out on Tut's mom, if Nefertiti was actually Tut's mother, or merely just his stepmother, this image of a very black-looking Egyptian pharaoh and his queen, sarcasm, is rather very telling of how deluded black Twitter has become in current year. Nefertiti was not a European white woman. She was born in Africa, and I really wish you would all stop hiding the fact that she was melanated and quit whitewashing black history. It's wrong, and we are tired of it. Now, as I have said, they have not found Nefertiti's body as of yet, but also, they don't really know that much about Nefertiti prior to her reign as Queen of Egypt. We don't know where Nefertiti comes from. There is speculation among historians that Nefertiti was born in Syria, 
which is not Africa. There is also speculation that she might have been born in Africa to Hai. Unfortunately, we don't know much, if anything. And the reason for this, well, Tut's successor, and then later Ai's successor, Horemheb went through great lengths to rewrite the previous dynasty's reign over the previous two generations, completely demolishing the city of Akhenaten, obliterating all mention of the god Aten, and returning Egypt to its polytheistic traditions, you know, the ones we're all familiar with, Ra, Seth, Osiris, completely undoing religious reformations of Akhenaten and Nefertiti's during their reign, and moving the capital of Egypt back to Thebes. In fact, until 19th and 20th century excavations of Egypt took place, history had completely forgotten about Akhenaten, Tutankhamun, and I, and by extension, Nefertiti. In layman's terms, Horemheb retconned history so bad that they had to rewrite history textbooks. So for you to speak with such confidence about the history of North Africa, specifically with regards to Queen Nefertiti, you'd either have to be a Time Lord, or even more likely you're a liar and a fucking bad one at that, or simply a fool. The jury is still out. How arrogant must you be to convince yourself that ancient Egypt was full of white people without a black person in sight? It takes some unmitigated gall. Nefertiti, I'm sorry what they're trying to do to you. You do know that this tweet could be just as easily turned around as well on you to say, how arrogant must you be to convince yourself that ancient Egypt was full of black people without a white person in sight? Now, as I stated earlier in the ancient world, it was much more likely for a person to encounter someone who hailed from the northern Mediterranean region rather than the South African region of the world due to the existence of natural barriers like the Sahara Desert. But if you don't believe me, I ask you, what would you rather cross? The Sahara Desert or the Mediterranean Sea? And of course, we can't have an outraged black Twitter in current year without bringing up our favorite basic white bitch. Let's hear it for Becky. Harpa who this woman? This Becky-faced, mayo-crusted, non-GMO Nefertiti is getting dragged back to Apple Care. <sighs> Hashtag save Becky. How come Nefertiti look like Susan from Connecticut? Hashtag also Susan. It's Black History Month, and the At Today show had the devil is a lie audacity to say Queen Nefertiti is white. Until the pillage from those white invaders along with the traders for riches that led to the downfall of Kemet, Egypt, nothing white in Egypt, all was shades of black. It's funny that you say that, because one of the most famous members of Egyptian royalty was actually a descendant of a Greek Macedonian. Are you familiar with Queen Cleopatra? Impossible! Nefertiti was a black Nubian woman. You do know your history, right? Now, I will say this one more time for the people in the back who cannot hear me screaming internally. Africa was not, and is not, a monolith of skin tones. To say that a rendition of Nefertiti with white skin is whitewashing black history demonstrates a fundamental lack of understanding of history, geography, archaeology, genealogy, and both ancient and contemporary demographics. You are full of shit, and if you were being honest with yourself, this bullshit wouldn't be blowing up on Twitter. Away from that, my dear viewers, you are probably asking yourself why this whole shitstorm is the case, why these people have become so deluded as to believe this. To be frank, we Was Kangs and shit is basically their version of My Grandmother Was 116th Cherokee. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider checking out the Teespring, Amazon, Patreon, and Maker Support links in the description down below. If you like what I'm doing here, but not necessarily that much, that's cool. You can always like, comment, share, subscribe, and hoodaloo.